Maharaj, my humble obeisances at your lotus feet, Maharaj. Thank you very much for gracing this association. Um, Maharaj, whenever you're ready, you may take the call over. Hari Bo. Thank you. Uh, I will read the verse and also the translation. I uh, will uh, request someone to read the print. Is that uh, possible? Um, Maharaj, you're, I don't know, are you too close? Yeah, to your phone? voice is vibrating. Yeah, yeah. I think it, you might want us a little bit. Yeah, back. my is. We were not able to comprehend, Maharaj, what you were saying. Hmm. Uh, I think um, the same problem, not the same problem yesterday. Uh, I'd like to get <coughs> my phone and work through the phone and do it. Mm. That may take a minute or two, so maybe less than that, but let's see. Just give me a call and we can set up the phone connection. Yeah. Yeah. Were you able to hear what I just said? Oh. Yeah, uh, we, can read, we can read the shloka, Maharaj. No I, yeah, but is the, is the clarity of my voice any better? No, no, Maharaj. It's uh, vibrating so much we cannot understand what you're saying. How about now? Can you hear now? Still the same, Maharaj. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> Nipani Mataji, do you want to read the shloka? Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Yasyati Bhaktir Bhagavat Yakinchana, Saver Gunae Tatrasama Sate, excuse me, Suraha. Harav Abhaktasyas Kuto Mahaguna Mano Ratena Ratena I'm sorry Mano Ratena Sati Davato Bahi. Mataji, can I repeat the shloka? Wait, uh, wait, 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 Yes, yes, the Bhaktir Baba. Yeah, Wait, wait. Wait. Don't begin. Cannot understand anything, Maharaj. Yeah, but just wait. One minute. Okay. Okay, go ahead, sir. Recording it. Hare Krishna, can you hear me now? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Wonderful. <laughs> clear now? Absolutely clear. Yeah. Okay. So I'll read the Sanskrit in translation, and then we I would request one of the devotees to read the purport. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Yes, Yasti Bhakti Bhagavati Akinchanam Savai Gunas Tatra Samastute Suraham Harava Bhaktasya Kato Mahagunam Manorvatena Sati Dayato Bahi. Translation <coughs> All the demigods and their exalted qualities, such as religion, knowledge, and renunciation, become manifest in the body of one who has developed unalloyed devotion for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudeva. 
On the other hand, a person devoid of devotional service and engaged in material activities has no good qualities. Even if he is adept at the practice of mystic yoga or the honest endeavor for maintaining his family and relatives, he must be driven by his own mental speculations and must engage in the service of the Lord's external energy. How can there be Sorry, Maharaj. I think you muted yourself, Maharaj. Accidentally. Yeah, because I thought it was some other device. Sorry, Maharaj. No, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Not Maharaj. Clear. Can you please unmute the other device, the Rishabh Das device? That one is okay. Hi, Krishna. You hear me, the devotees? Yes, Hi, Krishna. Now we can. Yes, thank yes, you. So, uh, just keep it on mute, and 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 the volume from this has to be also off. So yeah, can then, you disconnect uh, Guru Maharaj's audio, um, Risha Prabhu? Yes, to disconnect. But yeah, disconnect. Uh, after time, it asks to connect. That's why. Oh, okay. So just don't just keep it on mute, Maharaj. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Nothing mm -hmm. else will happen. Okay. We have to keep it keep it unmute uh, keep it muted here. Um, my, my so from my side, uh, don't mute, don't put, uh, don't change the uh, the unmute over here. Yes, yeah, so that's it. Okay, so should I read the translation again? Sure. sure. Uh, did you hear it the first time? We heard the beginning of it, Maharaj, but not the end. Okay, I'll read the whole translation. All the demigods in their exalted quality, such as religion, knowledge, and renunciation, become manifest in the body of one who has developed unalloyed devotion for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhakti On the other hand, a person devoid of devotional service and engaged in material activities has no good qualities. Even if he is adept at the practice of mystic yoga or an honest endeavor for maintaining his family and relatives, <clears throat> he must be driven by his own mental speculations and must engage in the service of the Lord's external energy. How can there be any good qualities in such a man? So please read the purport. <clears> Hare <throat> Krishna, I can read it for you, Maharaj. And the purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. As explained in the next verse, Krishna is the original source of all living entities. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 15.7, wherein Krishna says, Mamam Vam Shoji Valoke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana Manasasani Driyani Prakriti Sani Karshati. The living entities in this conditioned world are my material, are my, I'm sorry, are my eternal fragmental parts. Due to the conditioned life, they are struggling very hard with the six senses, which include the mind. All living entities are part and parcel of Krishna, and therefore, when they revive their original Krishna consciousness, they possess all good qualities of Krishna in small quantity. When one engages himself in the nine processes of devotional service, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam, Parasevanam, Archanam, Bandanam, Dasham, Satyam, Atman Nivedama, I'm sorry, Nivedanam. <laughs> One heart, one's heart becomes purified, and he immediately understands his relationship with Krishna. 
He then revives his original quality of Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> In the Adi Lila of Chaitanya Charitamrita, chapter 8, there is a description of some of the qualities of devotees. For example, Sri Pandita Haridas is described as being very well behaved, tolerant, peaceful, magnanimous, and grave. In addition, he spoke very sweetly. His endeavors were very pleasing. He was always patient. He respected everyone. He always worked for everyone's benefit. His mind was free of duplicity, and he was completely devoid of all malicious activities. These are all originally qualities of Krishna, and when one becomes a devotee, they automatically become manifest. Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj, the author of Chaitanya Charitamrita, says that all good qualities become manifest in the body of a Vaishnava, and that only by the presence of these good qualities can one distinguish a Vaishnava from a non Vaishnava. Krishna Das Kaviraj lists the following 26 good qualities of a Vaishnava. Number one, he is very kind to everyone. Two, he does not make anyone his enemy. Three, he is truthful. Four, he is equal to everyone. Five, no one can find any fault in him. Six, he is magnanimous. Seven, he is mild. Eight, he is always clean. Nine, he is without possessions. Ten, he works for everyone's benefit. 11, he is very peaceful. 12, he is always surrendered to Krishna. 13, he has no material desires. 14, he is very meek. 15, he is steady. 16, he controls his senses. 17, he does not eat more than required. 18, he is not influenced by the Lord's illusory energy. 19, he offers respect to everyone. 20, he does not desire any respect for himself. 21, he is very grave. 22, he is merciful. 23, he is friendly. 24, he is poetic. 25, he is expert. And 26, he is silent. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Chaksa un militam ye natas my shri gudavena maha. Nama om vishnu padaya krishna pristaya bhutale. Shri makti bhakti vedanta swami ti namine. Namaste saraswati deve. Gauravani pacharine nirvasesa sunyavadi. Pastyatya de satarine. Vanchakalpa, Taru Vishya, Kripa Sindhu, Pehebacha, Patita Anam, Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnava Bhyo, Namaho Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna, Jaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, <coughs> Sri Advaita, Kadadara, Srivasadi Gaur, Bhaktivindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Uh, could you uh, please return to the purport? <coughs> uh, the second half of the purport where it lists the 26 qualities. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Right there is fine. So this verse is quite, <coughs> it's a landmark verse because it shakes. <coughs> It, a lot of uh, established ideas that it, within society and that establishment is that, as the verse says, one who is engaged in devotional service develops automatically as they follow the process of devotional service accordingly, good qualities. And three are mentioned knowledge renunciation and uh, there's one more that's mentioned knowledge renunciation and uh, i can't remember the third one but the uh let's see it's in it's in the translation knowledge renunciation and 
Oh, religion, religion, knowledge, and religion. In other words, they develop worship of the Supreme Lord accordingly, develop knowledge that is free from duplicity and renunciation of everything that is contrary to spiritual advancement. <clears throat> Uh, also, in this translation, you'll find it mentions something very hard for people to understand or accept. <clears throat> that one who is not engaged in devotional service or engaged in material activities has no good qualities. <clears throat> so what does that mean? It's explained in the, sec in the rest of the because there are three material energies within the category of the total material energy, and that is sattva, rajas, and tamas. These are the three modes of material energy. These modes are, we call energies, that according to one's desire, as we desire in a certain way, we um, move the material energy according to the nature of that desire and we connect with a particular quality and characteristic that is uh, that identifies with a particular mode of material nature such as within the mode of passion a hard struggle <clears throat> to accumulate and to enjoy uh, material activities, the mode of ignorance is activities that are detrimental to oneself and to others. The mode of goodness is somewhat enlightened, but still is has the motivation of self-development opposed from spiritual development or mind and body development. So um, <clears throat> here, these three modes, as Krishna explains in the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, are never stable. They keep moving. Sometimes one mode is prominent, sometimes another mode is prominent. Sometimes there's conflict amongst the modes that become prominent. Sometimes two different modes mix with each other and give a combination of qualities and activities that are the results of the mixture. So what this verse is saying here is that when someone has no, material activities have no good qualities, that means they're not stable. They are always influenced by the changing of the modes. So a person may have good qualities under a certain circumstance, but then when that circumstance changes due to the shiftings of the modes, therefore, Apparent good qualities that is seen within a certain circumstance is no, is no longer pro prominent. But on the transcendental platform, when one develops good qualities, they are stable and they are not influenced by the changing of the modes, and they're the reflections of the soul's nature, as opposed to in the material world, they're adopted for one's further development in material life. <clears throat> so you can see the difference here. Even if a person is adept at mystic yoga, which is quite developed, you know, mystic yoga is a very high form of yoga. It's better than jnana yoga. It's better than karma yoga. It's when bhakti and mystic yoga contain are together, and then that mystic yoga fortifies that bhakti. But mystic yoga without bhakti <clears throat> is somewhat more or less the yogis. They can do very great material feats, such as walking across water, flying through the air, uh, taking bath in a particular holy place, and then rising up from that water 10,000, uh, I'm sorry, 1,000 miles away from where they, where they went underwater. So there's, this is a lot of the magic or the um, power to manipulate the material energy and also to influence others. And the second one is not as glorious on an honest endeavor for maintaining family 
and relatives. So the word honest is there to give credence that even that uh, is under the, as it says here, and the rest of the, it's driven by one's own ideas and speculations. So the external energy is not stable and the external energy is uh, engaged upon in order to further one's own personal interests. So therefore, at the end, it says, how can there be any good qualities in such a person? So because everything is in fluctuation and time and situations take away a person's good qualities or maybe bring about the good qualities. But in, on, on the spiritual level, uh, when one is fixed in devotional service, as it's mentioned here, according to the engagement of the nine process of bhakti, the most important pro principle of bhakti is to hear about Krishna. Shravanam is first. There is a sweet sequence in these uh, particular listings of these uh, nine categories of devotional service. Shravanam, when it matures, leads to kirtanam. When kirtana matures, it leads to remembrance of Krishna or Vishnu, as it says here. Then one wants to uh, engage in worshiping um, the pure devotee of the Lord, Pado Sevanam, visiting holy places. Then we have uh, deity worship, offering prayers, doing whatever service is needed at any time. Sakyam, Atman, Rivedanam are on the spontaneous platform. They uh, illustrate complete surrender and natural loving devotion to the Lord. So these nine processes, there's nothing outside of these nine, and each one is very powerful. But <clears throat> just to qualify the listing in relationship to the present situation, that is um, Lord Chaitanya's teachings, and that is Kirtanam, is fundamental <clears throat> to all of these. And of course, kirtanam, you can't have kirtanam without shravanam. <laughs> so uh, each one of the nine processes starts with shravanam and develops to the process of kirtanam. And kirtanam is foundational in each of the other uh, seven processes of devotional service. And what is the result? that one is coming in close, con closer contact to Krishna through the activities of these nine processes. Coming in contact with Krishna means developing the qualities that Krishna has in minute quantities. To give an, uh, an analogy, just like if there's a fire uh, somewhere in the distance, you can see the light and you may even be able to feel some of the heat but as you uh, approach the fire, getting closer, the light becomes brighter and the heat becomes more intense. So as we make progress in devotional service, the light of, of Krishna's presence and the knowledge of the qualities of Krishna start to manifest into the body of the devotee. And therefore, Prabhupada here uses the example of Haridas Dakor, uh, he was, even though he was persecuted in so many different ways, he remained tolerant, he remained well-behaved, he gave respects to everyone. He wasn't disturbed by that. Uh, he was always thinking of the welfare of others, and he was, he was deep in thoughts of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, um, and then we go to the remaining part of the purport where these 26 qualities are mentioned throughout the Bhagavatam in different ways, but in at least three, I think three or four purports in the Bhagavatam, they are listed in order here. And so as one develops these qualities, these are indicative of one's advancement in devotional service and not if one develops these qualities outside of devotional service it doesn't mean that they are glorious qualities nor does it mean 
that there that person is spiritual spiritual means within these nine categories of bhakti one has to be engaged in connection to krishna hearing about krishna and chanting about remembering krishna serving krishna worshiping krishna praying to krishna visiting the holy places that were of the pastimes of the lord <laughs> developing a friend and friendly attitudes towards Krishna in a natural way and surrendering everything of one's life to the lotus feet of the Lord in devotion. So, and these qualities will develop in relationship to that, that activity or these activities and nine activities of devotional service. So it's incumbent and it's very essential that we read these these 26 qualities and uh, each one of them has a particular explanation we can uh, I'll, I'll briefly because they are quite extensive here is 26 i'll briefly kind of summarize um what they mean he is very kind to everyone it's not this material type of kindness but the kindness of always thinking of the welfare of others what kind of devotee is when they come in contact to everyone they're kind by nature but they're always thinking how to benefit another does not make anyone their enemy uh, a person may make a devotee their enemy we have the example where um, Harani Kashipu made his own son his own his enemy. But uh, and although Harani Kashipu, the father of Prahlad Maharaj, was trying to kill his son, his son Prahlad never saw his father as his enemy. He saw him as just a big demon who was just misdirected in life. And needed the mercy of the Lord. So, as Prabhupada illustrates in many of his lectures, a devotee may find people making him or her their enemy, but we don't retaliate in the same way. In other words, we don't, enemies and friends are some, is mental speculation. In that same pastime, when, uh, <clears throat> when, uh, Prahlad Maharaj was approached by his father for reciting the glories of Lord Vishnu to Rani Kashipu. Rani Kashipu became so angry, he said, you're, you're siding with my enemy. And Prahlad Maharaj's response was, my dear father, the only enemy is your mind. <laughs> so on the mental level, we make friends and enemies. So friends and enemies is a concoction of the mind. Therefore, <clears throat> a devotee doesn't make anyone their friend or anyone their enemy, but they are friendly to everyone and they don't make anyone their enemy. The third one, truthful. In other words, they recite scripture and they live according to scripture and they speak according to scripture and the values of scripture. Even in ordinary dealings, they speak the truth accordingly. Equal to everyone, they don't see uh, one person to be more, uh, what we say, uh, they don't favor one person toward more than another person. They act according to the individual. They may deal differently with each individual, but according to the nature of that relationship, they are equal to everyone. They don't slight one and benefit another or vice versa. <clears throat> no one can find any fault in that person. So they are faultless. Um, those who find fault in them are only seeing their own reflection through their own mirror-like mind. They're magnanimous. They work for the benefit of everyone, not just for a few people, but and we, we we recite that verse, Omakyan timidandasya gena jena salakaya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri gurvena maha shri chaitanya mano bistam stapitam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadamayam dadati swam padanti kam. 
Rupa Goswami didn't leave the area of Vrindavan or well, you might say the area of India, but still his activities were beneficial to the whole world. Therefore, he is known as the most magnanimous. Seven, mild, mild nature. They are not uh, unnecessarily angry or unnecessarily uh, jubilant. They are mild by nature. They may be happy and express that happiness in different ways. But when dealing with others, they are friendly and mild. Always clean, inside and outside. Clean inside by chanting the holy names. Outside by keeping fresh and clean cloth, keeping their areas where they live clean, keeping whatever possessions they have clean. And Prabhupada said, not only clean, but revolutionary clean. <laughs> If you could understand the level of Srila Prabhupada's teachings in terms of cleanliness, you would faint. Cleanliness is, I can walk anywhere in your house and I will not find one speck of dust anywhere. If you don't have that standard, you're not clean. <laughs> so you might say, wow, Maharaj, now, now you, you, you're talking about the impossible. Of course, when you have children, and, and you have others who don't have that same understanding, you have a problem. But from your own perspective, you keep everything as clean and spotless as possible. I won't name the person, but I know there's one devotee. When he goes to a place, he runs his hand over the top. If there's any dust there. One time he came to one place and they invited him for lunch and the house was okay but he said i'm not taking prashadam here it's too dirty and so he, he he asked the prashadam to be brought to another place and so um the cleanliness that is of the vaishnav quality is not like the external cleanliness of the the non-devotees homes it's really way beyond that. So cleanliness is very, very important. And if you keep everything clean, you will never, you will hardly ever find yourself becoming sick or disturbed by the environment. Number nine, without possessions. That means without um, things that are not needed, they have their possessions, but only what is necessary to keep body and soul together. Number 10, works for the benefit of others. That's also similar to number six, magnanimous. Mm -hmm. Always thinking of the benefit of others. Very peaceful, not disturbed by happiness and distress. Always satisfied within themselves. Always surrendered to Krishna, whatever Krishna has dictated, whatever the spiritual master wants they make that their focus in their devotional service. Has no material desires, that's self-explanatory. Very meek, um, as it says in the Bible, the, the meek shall inherit the earth. So therefore we find in many religious scriptures that those who are humble and meek, the kingdom of God becomes their rightful heir. One is steady, not disturbed by the changing situations, always engaged in devotional service under all circumstances. Controls the senses. This is very essential in order to work in a beneficial way. Ones whose mind and senses are controlled, the super soul is already reached. Happiness and distress, honor and dishonor, heat and cold, appear to that person to be all the same. Does not eat more than required, um, not too much, not too little. Krishna mentions that in the Bhagavad Gita, that one should eat mm, just what one is required to keep body and soul together. That will differ according to the individual, of course, and according to one's um, Conditioning, sometimes more or less, 
or but in that sense that um, Prabhupada gave the the yoga uh, the uh, the yoga um, uh, formula he said uh, the stomach should be half filled with food one quarter filled with water and one quarter filled with air so after a meal that should be the state of the stomach uh, i can explain a lot more in that but that requires a lot of time but that's generally the, the formula number 18 not influenced by the lord's illusionary energy they can see maya coming they understand how maya is working they're not affected by that offers respects to everyone similar to some of the other ones and gives respects to all Trinata peace of Nichena Tayor Ivasa Hishnuna Amanina Amanadena offers respects to anyone. And the next one does not desire any respect for themselves. This is these two qualities and very meek and tolerant are the fundamental qualities as, as uh, illustrated in the Lord Chaitanya's teachings for devotional service. If, uh, if we develop these four qualities, humility, tolerance, respect for others, and not wanting respect for myself, then the result is kirtaniya sadanahi, that one can chant the holy names of the Lord continuously. Very grave. Grave means they're always Hare Krishna Maharaj, we lost your audio again. Hare Krishna. Okay. No, Maharaj is unmuted. Maharaj, Hare Krishna. We can't hear you. I don't think he can hear me either. Yeah, he can't hear us. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Okay, now he's muted that device. Can you hear me? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, just making sure because this is a little uh, unsteady here with this phone. Uh, merciful, uh, similar working for the benefits of others. In other words, if someone needs something, uh, praise for some. In other words, they they try to give blessings and benedictions to others, not in a mm, presumptuous way, but in a way of always thinking how others can be benefited. Friendly, devotee is friendly to everyone by nature. They come in contact with others, they're friendly. Poetic, this is a quality that develops in devotional service that as one makes progress in devotional service, one develops the poetic quality. Um, <laughs> I was just thinking of something to say poetically. Would you like to hear something? Poetic? Yes, please. Yes. You sure? Yes. Yes, yes ma. Absolutely. Okay, this is something that I came up with. Uh, his name is Balarama. He's better than Obama. What to speak of Osama? He'll take all of your comma and bring you to the holy Dhamma on the ultimate parikrama jai balarama so we practice oh, sometimes poetry okay uh 25 uh expert expert that means whatever they do they do it in the best way possible 
And number 26 is silent. <laughs> what does that silent mean? That does, doesn't mean he doesn't speak. It means he speaks only, it says that that means to speak truthfully, beneficially, avoid speech that offends, and recite the Vedas regularly. That is the quality of silent. And when it comes to materialistic topics, they are silent. And these are the 26 qualities of a Vaishnava. And one should, uh, it's important that devotees read these, think about them, and they actually try to practice them as listed here. And then you'll see, as you practice them, along with your devotional uh, activities, you'll see these qualities will start to develop naturally, both through the process of bhakti and the emphasis on the qualities like that. Okay, I'm sorry my voice is a little gruff because I, I'm not able to uh, I have a slight head cold and therefore I'm not able to clarify some of the wordings when I speak. So um, I can stop there and we can go on to the next situation. Thank you very much, Maharaj. What a wonderful explanation, especially about the 26 qualities. And fantastic point, Haribol, very nice. Um, we have some questions from devotees. If Anuradha Mataji, if you would like to unmute yourself and go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for the beautiful, beautiful class and beautiful poem, Maharaj. Maharaj, I just, we missed you when you were saying um, about grave. So who is a grave? Um, grave, um, it's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna mentions the, the austerities of the mind. He mentions austerities of the body, austerities of the, the mind, and austerities of speech. So when he talks about austerities of the mind, he talks about gravity. A, gra a grave person, you cannot tell what they're thinking. Um, they're deep in their thoughts. And they're usually contemplating Krishna consciousness, some spiritual subject matter. Um, there, it's a very exalted quality because it allows one to stay um, connected to higher consciousness. Uh, gravity should be practiced and it's one of the more important qualities and it's called the austerity of the mind to practice gravity. So I'll give you an example of how gravity may be played out. So you read something and then you think about it. And then you think about it, not only from the way it's being read, but from different angles of vision. And then you contemplate what this may mean in relationship to different situations. So that's a simple, that's a, that's a uh, symptom of a person acting uh, on the principle of gravity. Deep in thought. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Mahalas. Thank you. That was wonderful explanation. Very grateful. Please accept our humble obeisances. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. My obeisance is to you, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Tiffany Mataji, I see your hand raised. Would you like to ask a question? Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for the wonderful class. I'm so happy that um, I didn't realize until the, this morning that the verse was about, um, talked about the 26 qualities of a Vaishnava, which um, I've been kind of meditating on lately. So thank you so much for the class. And thank you, Anuradha Mataji, for asking about gravity, because I about being grave, because I wanted to hear that as well. Um, I just had one question. Um, you mentioned that mystic yoga can fortify bhakti. Is that what you said, fortify? And if so... Um, it can support bhakti, yeah. I mean, that means one can do really 
wonderful service to Krishna with that mystic power. But if it's bhakti is not there, mystic yoga in and of itself it will lead to material activities. No, high high grade material activities, but still material activities. Yeah. Okay. So mystic yoga really means some of the characteristics of the Astanga yoga system, which are asanam, um, which is a foundation for that, dharanam, pratyahara, pranayama, drilling the respirations, various types of yoga exercises that raise one's consciousness above the material and help to get one material powers. Mystic yoga really means about material powers. <laughs> well, so if you have those material powers, then you use them in devotional service and can do some amazing service. <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you for the class. It's wonderful to see you. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Can we see some of the other devotees? Can they turn on their cameras? Because we really like to be in association with everyone. So we're, we request the devotees to turn on your cameras. As much Thank as you. possible. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, devotees. We have Babu here. Uh, he has a question for you, Maharaj. Babu, would you like to go ahead, please? Mm -hmm. Where did he go? Mm. Trying to find Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yeah. Oh, okay. We we just miss one 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 thing before merciful. I think uh, you are muted at that time. But very good, very good lecture. You mentioned about cleanliness and gave example. And Prabhupada also mentioned cleanliness is next to godliness. So many times he repeated that. And um, yeah, I we just miss one point before. Merciful, I think. If you can just cover that part, that was one quality. Merciful. Then no, uh, before merciful, I think before merciful, you just got muted at that time. Hmm, I can't see the verses, so I'm not sure which quality that is. So before merciful is. Uh, very grave. I think I just explained gravity just now to. Um, Anurada, she asked. Were you? Did you hear my explanation when on Radha, on Anurada's question? Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, that was grave, right? Good, good. Thank you. Thank you, then. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Rupini Mataji, please go ahead, Mata. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada, all glories up to you. Thank you for such a wonderful class, Maharaj. I had one question like uh, regarding like, people who do meditation in this uh, age of Kali and then they feel, you know, that is the right path. So do they eventually take up to devotional service or, you know, it would be like multiple births because they're already doing meditation? Well, it can lead to devotional service, but then it cannot lead to devotional service. The meditation has to be on, on Krishna or one of the forms of Krishna. Medita or meditating on Krishna's holy names meditating on his forms, his qualities, his pastimes. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. These are all <clears throat> forms of meditation. But then again, in the secular world, people are 
practicing a type of meditation that is impersonal, where they try to silence the mind and go into a kind of stillness within themselves. But that's not possible because the mind is always active. It can't stay st still for more than a few seconds. <clears throat> so that kind of meditation uh, is really not recommended, nor is it devotional. But people who practice meditation can be instructed that actually the real meditation or the successful form of meditation is to meditate on the form of the Lord. And that meditation will, will awaken within their consciousness the happiness of seeing the Lord within their own meditative trance. Well, they have to practice that too. So we give them credit for the fact that they want to meditate, but we have to direct that towards Krishna. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank I you, mean, Maharaj. Because the reason I'm asking is my father has been practicing for so many years. You know, it's been like 15, 20 years. But I just want to know, like, where will it lead him to? You know, so he knows that I'm practicing this. But I mean, if he's not going to take up devotional service, so what will, you know, will it eventually happen or it will be lifetimes? So that's, you know. Is he's, What is he meditating on, do you know? Yes, he meditates on, you know, Krishna, he says, but I don't know, they close their mind and I don't know, so. <laughs> well, he's meditating on Krishna, that's devotional service. But it's like, you know, it's not chanting, right? You know, there is no service, service involving, it's just <clears throat> meditation, right? You sit and do, you know, in a quiet place. Well, we have to give him credit that he's meditating on the right thing, but mm, the actual process in this age is uh, meditation on the transcendental name of the Lord, which leads to a qualitative meditation on the form of the Lord. There is a progression in meditation. From the name comes the form, from the form comes the qualities, and the qualities comes the pastimes. So when one becomes proficient in meditating on Krishna's name, Krishna's form automatically, and I use that word, automatically appears in their minds through the meditation on Krishna's name. And as that form develops, then Krishna's qualities become the form of meditation. And the highest form of meditation is to, to meditate on Krishna's pastimes in Sri Vrindavan Dham. So whatever level he's at, it's some, it's some ele element of bhakti but you need to go further. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Hare Krishna. Okay, so. Anyone else? Devotees, any last minute questions? Or we, we have, have Induleka in in Prema Mayi. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Dandu Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances to you. Um, Hare Krishna. Thank, thank you, you for your wonderful class. Blessed to be able to associate with you. Uh, my question was, um, in Vanaprastha Ashrama, um, Prabhupada explains in Bhagavatam um, how they have to uh, leave everything, go to a distant place, and uh, even not take care of their bodily needs, like don't cut the hair, nails, um, they're just... Uh, just wandering without anything. Um, so I understand in this age, it was meant for the previous yugas. Uh, so in this age, Kali Yuga, how would we conduct ourselves in Vanaprastha Ashrama Maharaj? 
Yeah, this has been a topic of discussion. I was at a very interesting assembly of senior devotees and we, we discussed this in Mayapur a few years ago in order to kind of uh, give a foundation or a clarity on Van, Ash, uh, on Van Aprasta because there is no clarity in, um, as you mentioned, what's mentioned in the scriptures is really applies to a different age. Um, but in essence, uh, Vanaprastha means to dedicate one's life to the service of a particular deity and remain within to that deity, deity and serve that deity to the rest of the remaining part of your life. So one can go in the holy place and do that. You know, women can put on white and go to Vrindavan and stay there. You see, you go to Vrindavan, you see many of these ashrams with ladies who wear white. They're, you know, they're renunciates. And um, the idea is to get out of the particular uh, household situation and uh, focus more uh, attention on uh, Krishna and devotional service. One can do that even from home. One can make the deity of a, one's local temple their istadev and then serve that deity to the rest of them. So that's a type of vanaprasa vana, vana that is recommended in this age. Now, <clears throat> Uh, for those who are serious about executing that particular ashram, or then best thing is to talk to people who are on that level, who are actually practicing it, and they can tell you all the dynamics that more or less are there. Okay. But it's not it's not clear. I can only give you that one essential principle. Dedicate your life to a particular deity and serve that deity until you leave the world. Okay. Okay. That was very helpful, uh, Maharaj. Thank you so much for your explanation. Right, bring some clarity. To my yeah. Mind. Thank you so much. Very well. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Uh, Nina, how are we doing? You're doing thank, very well, Maharaj, with your blessings. Everything is great. Is there anything else? To, uh, do we have any more devotees who want to speak? We have Namrata Mataji. Mataji, please go ahead with your question. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my obeisances. Just the follow up from the last question. Uh, the de you you were saying about the deities. One should uh, serve a particular deity in the one of So deities, as in, um, if it is Radha Krishna, then uh, it is it would be in the uh, Madhurya mood. Uh, if it is Bal Bal Gopal, then it will be in Vatsali mood. So does it refer to uh, do? Bhakti in the particular mood in the Vanaprastha Ashram? Um, well, that has to be clarified by the spiritual master. <clears throat> Knowing the devotee and the situation the devotee is in and their tendency for worship and their previous history in devotional service, and that, that guidance is required to take the next step. Um, so it's, it's also part of... Um, one's identity in the spiritual world <laughs> so um yeah i think that requires direct discussion with the spiritual master in order to clarify everything and to get a understanding on how to proceed <laughs> but mm, when you worship the lord mm, you know you can worship the lord in any of the different <clears throat> rasas <clears throat> It doesn't necessarily mean, I mean, Krishna Balaram are, you know, they are, they're in Sakya Ras. <laughs> uh, baby Krishna is in Vatsalya Ras. 
And, um, you know, Radha Krishna is Madhurya Ras, but that's between them. Our relationship with them could be of any of the Rasas. <laughs> any of the, the major Rasas, that is. <laughs> So that's an advanced stage of bhakti and therefore requires uh, careful consideration and discussion with the spiritual master. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. I can't go into details because the details are too, too subtle, many of them. <laughs> yes, I understand, Maharaj. I think there are many questions related to it, but I think uh, that would be a personal discussion required according to the individuals, I guess. Maharaj, I think you unmuted your, uh, you muted yourself accidentally. Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank okay. You. Okay, so. Um, let's see. Let's see any questions. I'm still available if anyone would like to discuss more. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, Maharaj, I have a question. I just seen, uh, it's a general question. Can I ask? Yeah, excuse me. I, if I'm coughing, it's just something that I have to deal with here. Uh, yeah, uh, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Maharaj, uh, actually I have this question for a long time because um, uh, we are uh, celebrating um, the Kartik month as uh, Radharani month and that is favorable even for Krishna. But Krishna in Bhagavad Gita says that Marga Shisha month is uh, most favorable for him. So um, I just want to know why is it so? Uh, when Krishna <laughs> is saying Marga Shisha month is... Uh, <laughs> Favorable to him, but we are celebrating Kartik month. So Kartik month, okay, it's a month of Radharani, so we are celebrating. And Margashisha month, why Krishna is saying that it's favorable for him. I want to know about. <laughs> uh, well, well, <laughs> not sure I can answer your question. <laughs> um, but, uh, well, before you can get to Krishna, you have to. Go through Radharani's uh, her month is first. <laughs> the next month after Kartik is Magashirsha. Uh, you you can use an analogy for that. I'm not sure. Well, the analogy is that you're preparing yourself for the ultimate. You know, Radharani takes you to Krishna. Huh? So Krishna says, "At months I am Magashirsha." Yeah. yeah. He doesn't say why he's Magashirsha. Well, all we can see is that it follows Radharani's month. <laughs> okay. So we can take in uh, Margashisha month as uh, Radharani's month. So that's what you're saying? Or, um, Kar Maharaj? Kartik month is, is Radharani's month. Yeah. Kartik. But yeah. <clears throat> the gopis uh, of Vrindavan, they performed. Uh, uh, Vrat uh, for Krishna on Marga Shisha month, uh, yeah. Maharaj. It's also the month of harvest, right? It's the harvest month. Yeah, month of harvest, yeah. 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 Yeah, so harvest means to get the benefit of everything that you've done. So we're harvesting our bhakti when we get to Krishna. <laughs> okay. We can use that as an analogy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank so you. Harikusha. By harvesting from the year starting, then we can get Krishna by year end in Radharani's month. <laughs> yeah. So that can but, be the but don't don't tell that to the Brijabasis because they won't agree with you. 
<laughs> they, they say Radharani is the highest, not Krishna. Krishna is second. <laughs> yes. We, yes. <laughs> We, we we only worship Krishna because Radharani worships Krishna. Otherwise, we're only interested only in Radharani. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Maharaj. <laughs> that's the Brijabasi. So well, that's the the um, the uh, what is it? <clears throat> the Varsana Basis. <laughs> thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you. I'm getting some interesting questions today. <laughs> this is really, thank you. I'm really inspired by the intricacies of these questions. We have Sri Rad, Sri Hari Radhi Radha Dasi. Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam. Please accept my humble obeisances, Maharaj. I have a question, but it is not related to the class. May I ask you? Please. <laughs> okay, my question is that uh, we grew up hearing your audio Bhagavatam and other classes of um, online that, that have been audioed on YouTube and other channels that you have done, like the Bhagavatam verses, you know, and um, translation reports. So what I wanted to ask you, um, is there any way I can get that seva also from you? Um, you would like to get the recordings of the lectures? Is that what you're asking? No, I'm asking if, you know, the when the book is open and you read the book and you audio it uh, on your site, like how you do it, can I be involved or engage in that seva too by you? Mm, I'm, I'm, I somehow I'm not understanding exactly your question. I'm saying book reading audio. Book reading. Oh, you mean just reading from the book? <clears throat> yeah, just reading from the book. Like you, you read from the book and you audioed your voice. That's what I would like to do. Can I be engaged in that service by you? That's what I'm asking in the future or in the present, if you may allow me. Oh yeah, sure. Of course, that's a nice service to the devotees. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Read and uh, you can also read and then try to uh, read the commentaries given by the acharyas on the ver on the on the verses that you read, and then you can uh, or you can read Prabhupada's purports, and and then you can then you can even s speak something. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, nice service. Hare Krishna. Hare Shri Hari Radha. Dandavat Pranam. Jai Sri Radhe. Jai Sri Radhe. Okay, so looks like we have exhausted our Prashnas, right? No more Prashnas. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my Hare Krishna. Yeah. So Maharaj, like I just got one question. So when we discuss about these qualities, so in some proportion, on and off, like both devotees and non-devotees uh, have uh, these qualities. So does it mean that when we say that uh, Vaishnava manifest all this quality, it means that it's in full, like consistent all the time? Does it mean it's that? A, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, not necessarily. But what the verse is saying is yes, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but it's a process of development. You can be grave, you can be more grave, you can be merciful, you can be more merciful, you can be kind, you can be more kind. Okay. So each of these qualities uh, can develop, you know, exponentially and not unlimitedly, but up to a certain point. Uh, as we say, as it says, these qualities are in minute quantity in relationship to Krishna, who has these qualities mm -hmm. completely in full. That's where he's mm -hmm. called Bhagavan. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So it's not like you get to a certain point. No, you can develop it more and more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because I was like, like getting confused that some non-devotees also exhibit uh, some of these qualities in some proportion. So, so how do we see that devotees? So it, so like you answered, I understood that the devotees try to get it to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. Uh, so that is what the differentiation between devotees and non-devotees is. Is that correct? No, no, the difference is that one is engaged in devotional service and one is under the influence of the material energy. That's what oh, the okay. verses mean. Under mm -hmm. the influence of the material energy, these qualities are not stable. Oh, okay. They can be lost in any, any situation. One can be kind, but then a situation changes and they can be something different. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The material energy keeps changing. Therefore, those who could develop these qualities in relationship to material activities, their qualities are also uh, uh, mutable. They're always changing. Also. Can, mm -hmm. can always change. Right. Right. Yeah. So for a devotee, like these qualities won't get influenced by the modes of material nature. So that's where the difference exactly. is. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, now I make the connection. Thank you so much, Maharaj. It's clear now. Thank you. Hare Bhagavan. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Jai Ho. Thank you, Vamsi. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Manoj Pranams. Thank you so much. Uh, am I audible? Yes, I can. I can. You're audible and viewable. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept your humble obeisances. I'm very Shushila Prabhupada, I'm very to you. Thank you so much for your very wonderful association. Uh, so Maharaj, uh, can you <clears throat> say something more about how to uh, practice cleanliness? I know, I mean, we have seen you <laughs> and also Srila Prabhupada mentions that, but it's, it's always like a very high standard. We want to yeah. go to that. Mm. Prabhupada taught us how to wash the floor too. <laughs> he got down on his hands and knees and showed the art of how to wash the floor. If you're washing the floor with a mop, you're not cleaning the floor, so throw your mops away. <laughs> All you're doing is pushing the dirt from one place to another. You catch a little bit of it, you don't get it all. And so washing the floor means getting down <clears throat> with a bucket, two buckets, and uh, putting the water onto the rag and washing it and putting the rag in the other bucket, squeezing it out and drying it, and then going to the next section and doing the same. And then the floor is clean and dry when you're done. <laughs> That's floor cleaning. <laughs> Um, if you want to learn more of the intricate art of cleanliness, look behind things, find the dirt, and don't just clean what you see. Yeah. Then we call them surface cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, you move that furniture and you find there's a, there's a whole colony of insects behind there who have been there for like two months. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so cleanliness, uh, keep your house very clean. If you have a big house, it's hard, but you should, it's still important to uh, keep everything very clean and spotless. Cleanliness is a real, it's one of the two most important of the Brahminical qualities. Of out of the Brahminical qualities, truthfulness and cleanliness are considered to be the two most important. <clears throat> so Prabhupada said yes our temples should be revolutionary clean he said beyond what is normally understood as cleanliness so practice that keep everything if you have too much stuff then it becomes hard to keep things clean that's another uh, way to uh, make it difficult to keep things clean Oh. have a place for everything and everything in its place. 
like that. Um, and Prabhupada was very strong in this. He criticized us quite heavily for <clears throat> because in the scriptures it says that in each of the ashrams in Kali Yuga there is a defect. And in the ashram of the brahmacharis, the brahmacharis who live in the temple, the defect is that brahmacharis are unclean. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not trying to criticize, but if you go to any brahmachari ashram, you'll know what I'm speaking about. <laughs> so, yeah, so I know one temple where they just give the brahmacharis a little space to keep their stuff and anything outside of that space, that's too much stuff. Therefore, they have to get rid of it. So. And that, that fortifies cleanliness, simplicity, like that. So practice cleanliness, like that, with, with taking, one should take bath regularly every day. Uh, <clears throat> it says that, actually it says for grihas, uh, brahmachari should bathe once a day, grihas is twice a day. And um, sannyasis three times a day. But Prabhupada said if it's not possible because of health, then at least once a day. Um, he mentions, um, let's see, what was it? Um, oh, yeah, in the uh, seventh canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, verses, uh, seventh canto, chapter 12, I believe, verses. 8 through 12, called, is the, the 30 activities of the human, of human society. And one of them is to take baths twice a day. So, but at least once a day in the winter time, usually when it gets hotter weather, you, you can usually twice a day like that. You're looking for that verse. It's four verses in one. Let's see, maybe, uh, no, it's, uh, I'm sorry, it's not chapter 12, it's chapter 11. I'm sorry, yeah. Chapter 11, 7, 11, 8 through 12, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this verse is the basis of Van Ashram. If you want to know the basis of Van Ashram, this is the verse, yeah. There he goes. Yeah, yeah. these 30 qualifications, words, is, it mentions something. Of bathing twice a day at the very top of the page, you'll see. These are a general principles to be followed by all human beings. And so if you study this, then you can understand how Vainashram needs to be uh, implemented using these 30 principles here. Yeah. You'll see throughout the scriptures there are many verses that emphasize in a very serialized form the qualities and characteristics and activities of a devotee. <clears throat> and so putting a lot of emphasis because you'll see some of the other spiritual, spiritual groups in the world they don't talk so much about behavior or activities or things to do and things not to do. All they're interested in is getting people to do certain spiritual activities. And they don't restrict people as far as personal um, activities are concerned. But our movement is not like that. There are things that we have to do and things we have to avoid. Otherwise, we can't worship the Lord in the proper consciousness. Thank you so much, Maharaj. That's something really to meditate on and put into practice as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Okay, so... We have um, yeah, Aruna Mataji. 
you may go ahead and ask your question, please. Aruna Mataji, I see your hand raised. Do you have a question for Maharaj? Maybe not anymore. Devotees, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask your questions. Hey, Krishna Mataji, I tried to unmute her. She's not unmuted, Mataji. Mm. So, maybe yeah, by accident. If no one has a question, we can leave. Yeah. We don't want to keep Maharaj waiting, you know, <laughs> for a long time. Thank you. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm uh, running out of energy, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Maharaj, you need to eat your lunch. Well, it's, it's just because I'm sick. I don't have any energy, but. Yeah. Uh, so I think it would be good if we can, can stop here. Yes. And yeah. we'll see you again very soon. Yes, Maharaj. Thursday is my favorite day. Our favorite day too. <laughs> yeah. Let's be our obeisance to Maharaj. One chakal patal bheshya kripa sindhu bheva chepati dana. Thank you. 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 Thank you.